Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Ross, your instructor. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to automatically move focus to the next field after data entry using the Auto Tab property. So if you set a field for two characters, for example, or two digits, as soon as you type in those two digits, it moves you to the next field. And that's what we're going to cover in today's video. Today's question comes from another Richard in North Adams, Massachusetts, one of my developer students. Richard says, I have a field that I want to store as a number, a long integer internally, but I want to display it as two digits, 0, 1, 0, 2, and so on. Also, when the user types in both digits, I would like to automatically move to the next field. How can I do this? Well, Richard, there's two ways to do this. There's the easy way, which is quite simple or there's the more complicated but more flexible way. I'll show the complicated way in the extended cut, but let me show you the easy way first. Let's open up my blank customer template. You can download this free from my website. There's a link down below in the description. Here's my blank customer template. Let's go to the customer form. And down here we have a number called family size. Let's apply Richard's parameters to this family size field. Let's go to design view. Open up the properties for family size. Now, family size internally is stored as a number. If we go to the customer table and design it, you'll see right here, family size, where are you? There you are, the long integer, all right? So in the form, now if I just want to display this as a two-digit value, I can go to the format and put in 0, 0. 0 says, show me a number in this spot. And if you put two of them there, then you see two digits. So for a number, save changes, You'll see every number shows up with two digits. If there's more, if you put in 233, it'll show three digits. But if there's only one, you'll get two. That's how the format works. So that's how we display the value, how we want to see it. Now, what about entering in the data? Well, there's a property called Input Mask. Go over to the Data tab and go to Input Mask. For the Input Mask, type in 09. Now, what does that mean? Zero says there has to be a value entered in this spot, a number. Okay, nine says there may be a value entered in this spot. So this says you have to input at least one digit, but you can input two. That's what zero nine means. I cover formatting and the input masks, by the way, in a lot more detail in my Access Beginner Level 3 class. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. There's all kinds of different stuff you can do with input masks. You can format for dates, you can format for text, for numbers, all kinds of stuff. All right, so let's close this and save it. Go back in. So now when I click on family size, you can see there's a little input mask popping up there. See that little underscore? All right, let's say I'm up here and I tab down to it. Tab, 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 tab. Okay, if I type in a one, look at, I get a little underscore there. That's the input mask running. Now I can leave it as one and hit tab and then the format kicks in and shows it like that. Okay, or I could type in one, one. Okay, what if I try typing in uh, 500, 500, all right, I can't, I'm hitting the third digit there and nothing's working, okay, or I can backspace and I can type in just a nine, all right, see that, so I can type in at least one and at most two digits. If you want to control the values that go in there, by the way, use a validation rule. For example, you can go to validation rule, let's say the maximum family size you allow is, is 20, Okay, so this has to be less than or equal to 20. Max values between 0 and 20. All right, see that? You can put this stuff at the table level too. I usually prefer doing it on the form because you might have a separate form, like an administrator form, where you allow stuff that you don't allow the users to put in your, in your form. So I don't put the validation rules usually at the table level. That's just my preference. So now if I come down here and I try putting in 35, it yells at me. Okay. So i got to hit escape or, or fix it. Okay, now here comes the third component of this. we got the format to display it, the input mask to enter the data. Now, I want to tab automatically to that next field once I'm done typing in two digits. I want it to go 1-1 one, one, and then immediately jump down to customer sense. How do you do that? Well, that's the star of the show, the auto tab property. So right click design view, go into the properties for family size again. On the other tab, find this guy right here, auto tab. 
It says automatic tab after the last character permitted by input mask is entered. All right, set that to yes. Now, so this, this property works in conjunction with the input mask. All right, once someone reaches the end of the input mask, it jumps to the next one. So it doesn't work with like a free formatted text string where they don't know how many characters you're going to type in. So if you know it's always going to be two characters or always going to be four characters, like a month or a year or a credit card number or something like that, set the auto tab property after you set your input mask. And now, customer form, right? Come in here, tab to family size, 05. Boom, right down to the next one. Come up here, right? 66. Oh, I get yelled at. All right, back it up. 15. Boom. 22. Nope, can't do it. 01. Same. And after a while, your people will get used to the fact that they can either go one tab or they can go 03 and it jumps them. All right, people get in a habit when they're doing data entry, especially a lot in a row, right? They start going 03, 04, 05. All right, you get used to that. So that's the easy way to do it. The more difficult way, which adds a little bit of flexibility, involves a bit of coding, and I'll show that in the extended cut for the members. Want to learn more? Want to see my more extended version of this? Well, get the extended cut. Members only, silver members and up. I'm going to show you how to do this without the validation rule, without the input mask, and without the auto tab property. It adds more flexibility. There's more stuff you can do with it. We'll learn about the on change event, the before update event, and the text property that every field has. One of the benefits of my new method is if you come down here and you type in a valid field, I change it so that it's values from 1 to 12. I'm, I'm pretending we're doing a month here. All right, 11 is fine. If I type in 07, it's fine. If I type in 37, da, 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 it doesn't do anything. It lets you type in what you want, and as soon as you try to leave the field, it pops up invalid month. Okay, but as soon as you type in something right, it lets you do it. Okay, and that is what we do with our VB code. A little bit of code, maybe you know, 10 lines of code. But the programming method offers a lot more flexibility. There's a lot more you can do with it. I covered that in the extended cut. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these Tech Help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.